Slide number 75. Immediately to the left of the drive pulley, red pointer, we have a very important friction or spring clutch called cycle clutch. Actually, it is the print clutch, since it is used whenever the typewriter prints a character. The collapsing type clutch spring is located under the indicated part called clutch sleeve. As a result, the spring is not readily visible. As mentioned earlier, on the extreme right end of the operational shaft, we have a clutch, yellow pointer, which operates in exactly the same way as the cycle clutch or print clutch, with the added advantage that in lieu of a sleeve which completely covers the spring, it has a part called shift ratchet which does not cover up the spring. The shift ratchet, however, performs the same functions as those performed by the indicated cycle clutch sleeve. Slide number 76. Here we have removed three parts of the shift mechanism for easier viewing. Leave the shift clutch on your machine assembled for the time being in order to enable you to examine its operation when it is still completely assembled. The name shift mechanism is a carryover name from the type bar typewriter terminology. In a strict mechanical sense, the Selectric typewriter does not really have a shift mechanism, since there isn't anything to shift in the machine. Shift in the Selectric typewriter is only an extension of another mechanism called rotate mechanism. The depression of the shift key causes the shift clutch release arm, or shift clutch latch, indicated by the yellow pencil, to rotate counterclockwise and away from the metal lug on the shift ratchet or shift clutch sleeve. Be sure to confirm this on the fully assembled clutch of your machine. We have called the indicated shift clutch release arm by the name of shift clutch latch. You need to know that the name shift clutch release arm is the name chosen by the manufacturer. Unfortunately, this name is not sufficiently descriptive of the function of this part. When we study the cycle clutch or the print clutch, you will find that for the part performing the exact same function, the manufacturer has chosen the name clutch latch. The name clutch latch is a much better name than clutch release arm, as you will soon see. For example, a release arm must also be capable of catching the clutch parts before it can release them. We use the name clutch latch rather than release arm. You must, however, be keenly aware of this for the time when you engage in a technical discussion with an IBM trained person. If we are not sufficiently careful with this, we should be prepared for vehement protest for such a sacrilege on our part. The objective of this program is not that of preparing you for a far out snow job, but rather to make you understand and efficiently repair the IBM Selectric typewriter. Duplication of nomenclature only delays the achievement of our goals in the area of mechanical comprehension. Throughout most of this program we will use IBM's nomenclature and we will make sure that you're properly informed about the IBM nomenclature whenever we deviate from it. Slide number 77. Notice that when you depress the shift key, the indicated shift ratchet, yellow pencil, rotates top to the front of the machine. This is caused by the collapsing of the shift clutch spring, which originally was held in its expanded state. After releasing the shift key, you might try to manually rotate the ratchet back into its original position. Notice also that the shift key comes back up and how the shift ratchet resumes its latched position so that you can depress the shift key again. Be sure to allow yourself enough time for these observations. Slide number 78. Now depress the shift lock key. 
With the aid of a spring hook, you might squeeze the plastic foam dust cover towards the right between the indicated shift lock key and the tabulation key. This will enable you to see the latch and the keeper, which holds the key down. While you're at it, take a moment or two to trace the mechanical connection between the left hand shift key and the right hand shift key. Notice that another depression of the shift key on either side of the keyboard releases the shift lock key. Place the shift key in its locked down position. And then rotate the hand cycle wheel while observing the shift clutch. You should have observed that the shift cam only performed one half of one revolution and then it stopped. Depress the shift key again to release the shift lock. Continued turning of the operational shaft brings the shift cam back to its rest position. Finally, depress the shift lock key one more time. Then turn the hand cycle wheel until the shift cam stops again. Slide number 79. The shift ratchet is just like a sleeve which fits over the right end of the shift clutch spring. When we turn the operational shaft with our hand cycle wheel, we provide the torque. The released shift ratchet allows the closing of the shift clutch spring. At its right end, the now collapsed shift clutch spring receives torque from the operational shaft, and as the spring turns with the operational shaft, it transmits this torque or turning force to the left end of the clutch spring where it is connected to the shift cam. The yellow pencil points at the right end of the clutch spring which is held by the ratchet or sleeve. The red pencil shows the point of connection between the left end of the spring and the cam. It takes a bit of analyzing what happens when the rotation of the shift cam is interrupted. Let us go through it once, assuming that the operational shaft is being turned by the power of the motor. Since the shift ratchet in reality is only a sleeve which fits over the right end of the shift clutch spring, when we stop the shift ratchet, we also stop the right end of the shift clutch spring. The shift cam, however, has acquired inertia under the action of the motor, and it continues to turn. The result is that the clutch spring expands and disengages the clutch, or breaks the connection between the operational shaft and the cam. In order to hold the clutch spring in its expanded form, the shift clutch uses the shift cam brake for its small character position, and a detent for the capital character position. To simplify this discussion, let us resort to drawings. Slide number 80. This is an exploded view of some of the parts which constitute the shift clutch. The shift clutch release arm, or latch, as well as the shift cam brake and detent were left out. The arbor is fastened to the operational shaft by set screws. Whenever the machine is on, the operational shaft and the arbor turn top to the front of the machine. The arbor is a source of positive driving power for the rotation of the shift cam. On your machine, you will not be able to see the arbor until we disassemble the clutch. The shift clutch spring is assembled around it and thus covers up the arbor. In order to transmit this driving power from the arbor to the cam, we use the shift clutch spring. The shift clutch spring is manufactured so that its internal diameter is smaller than the outer diameter of the driving arbor. Notice that the right end of the shift clutch spring is wound top to the front. During a regular shift operation, when the shift ratchet or sleeve is released, 
the shift clutch spring collapses onto the arbor, which is turning constantly. The friction between the outer surface of the arbor and the inner surface of the shift clutch spring develops a very firm grip since the spring is as yet stationary and the arbor is turning. The left end of the shift clutch spring is connected permanently to the shift spring retainer plate and the plate in turn is connected permanently to the shift cam. As the arbor continuously drives the right end of the spring, the spring first tightens up very firmly and then turns with the arbor only to end up turning the retainer plate and the cam along with it. Of course, the shift ratchet must turn also, since it is like a sleeve fitted over the right end of the shift clutch spring. As we have seen earlier, we can interrupt the rotation of the ratchet with a shift release arm or latch. The all-important fact to remember is that the shift clutch release arm or latch first interrupts the rotation of the ratchet and not the shift cam. Not yet, anyway. This amounts to saying that the shift cam continues to rotate because of its inertia. At this point, please reverse the position of your sound cassette so as to continue by playing cassette 2, side 2.